Cool. Yeah. So thanks, Josh. And uh, good afternoon. Good to be on the other side of lunch. So I'm not uh, racing the clock here in people's stomachs. Um, my, my name is John Orlando. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Epic Solutions. We're going to be giving a, a double lightning talk today. So about 10 minutes talking about something that's probably a little bit more boring to some of you than the software talks that have been before. This is going to be more related to hardware, sort of where the rubber meets the road in terms of taking the waveform processing that people like to build and actually get it deployed on um, hardware that can do things. So uh, my uh, colleague and co-founder Aaron Matson gave a talk yesterday and had the same slide here, just kind of accompany it at a glance. So I'm not going to bore you with the details here. I'll uh, accentuate the same more hiring pitch if you like build cool radio things, hardware, software, FPGA, and get them into the real world, solving real hard problems. Come and find us and talk to us at our booth. So, um, so we have a portfolio of software-defined radios that are traditionally very optimized for super small low size, weight, and power. Uh, mini PCI Express cards right on up um, the rain here. Uh, but what you'll notice if you start looking a little bit more closely at these is that they all top out at six gigahertz. And uh, the whole portfolio that we've got and a lot of the other vendors that are on the market, you, if you kind of look across even past Epic, you'll see that typically six gigahertz is about where most people sort of, uh, sort of stop. So why is that, right? A lot of the waveforms that are out there today commercial waveforms that are out there today driving interest um, generally fall below six gigahertz, right? This isn't rocket science. That's why people are more focused on that space than above six gigahertz, right? AM, FM radio, uh, push to talk, public safety, cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of those have kind of dominated the wireless landscape below six gigahertz. And the RFIC vendors and a lot of the RFIC part makers kind of follow the money. Um, you look at the lineup along the bottom there of of different RFICs that are common between analog devices and Lime Micro and Xilinx's RF SOC. They all generally kind of stick to this universe of six gigahertz and below operation. Um, but the times are changing and the needs for being able to support above six gigahertz are rapidly coming upon us here. Um, thanks to a few commercial changes that have happened in the last year or so, I'll say specifically related to Wi-Fi 6E and kind of the upcoming uh, changes related to Wi-Fi 7, as well as some of the 3GPP work that's happening to be able to further extend frequency bands. Uh, the talk yesterday on 5G, detecting 5G cells talked about millimeter wave, which is much, much higher in frequency, right? 24 to 52 gigahertz and soon to be 24 to 71 gigahertz. But there's a lot of interest, right, dipping right above 6 gigahertz here with Wi-Fi and LTE both uh, and 5G both supporting needs for bands that'll be dealing with the six gigahertz nominally to just north of seven gigahertz in the near term. And this is in addition to the other signals that you would typically find in these ranges, right? If you go looking parts of the <clears throat> X band and KU band, right? Normally reserved for satellite communications and radar systems and, and other things that kind of play up there more nominally. We're gonna start to see a little bit more of a progression of vendors having to make hardware that can support these frequencies to make sure that we have solutions. And a lot of investment has happened to make SDRs that are working sub six gigahertz. So how do you think about keeping that investment without having to redo everything, right? The traditional approach here is basically to say, great, we've got our sub six gigahertz SDR. What if we just put a block RF converter in sitting in front of it that basically takes those higher frequencies, whether it's 12 gigahertz, 18 gigahertz, whatever the case may be, down convert them in analog terms to something below six gigahertz. And then from the six gigahertz SDR perspective, it's just tuning to whatever that intermediate frequency happens to be, whether that's at two gigahertz or three gigahertz or four gigahertz. Um, same exact idea works on transmit. You can basically use your sub six gigahertz SDR and transmit at some frequency below sub six gigahertz at a nominally an IF and use a final block conversion stage to be able to move that up to a, to a higher frequency. So you get the best of both worlds here. You get to be able to continue using a lot of the hardware and software infrastructure that you had working with sub six gigahertz signals while still being able to have a bolt on to be able to support um, frequencies above that. We're seeing this topology being deployed already by folks that need to be able to extend the frequency range of their hardware solution and give them coverage into these frequencies that they care about. Um, we as a company are uh, supporting that on a couple different fronts. If you've been over by our booth, we have a new design that we're working on um, for this exact topology that basically gives us coverage between six and 18 gigahertz uh, to be able to kind of provide that up block up down conversion solution with an upcoming uh, 3U VPX car in our Sidekick family called Sidekick VPX 410. So we're giving a sneak peek here. We'll be doing a more formal announcement a little bit later um, next quarter. But this is a four channel receive, one channel transmit 
6 to 18 gig uh, RF tuner card that supports up to a gigahertz of bandwidth per channel. So customers that are interested in looking at these wider new Wi-Fi signals that are coming down the pike or other signals that happen to be poking up around that are hundreds of megahertz wide between 6 and 18 gigahertz, this gives a very viable option for being able to get access to them in a reasonably, uh, re reasonably near-term time frame. And it adds to the ability to do phase coherent or independently tunable receive across the receiver. So for people that like to do uh, processing across phase coherent uh, sets of channels, you have options for doing that on the receive side. Um, the current uh, configuration that we're gonna be delivering is four receive channels, one transmit channel that support these frequency ranges. Um, options for kind of doing some mixing and matching there for customers that have interest to be able to get two receive, two transmit, or other combinations are certainly possible. Um, this still follows the same low power philosophy that we've had from day one and fairly um, significant integration onto a single card. We're looking at about a 20 watt power envelope for all four receivers and one transmitter, uh, all four receive tuners and transmit tuners operating simultaneously. And it's really meant to kind of made up of some of our existing sub six gig SDRs or other vendors uh, sub six gigahertz SDRs. So um, architecture wise, I mean, you can see the slides in the block diagram a little bit later, but we kind of gave a, a sense of what's there. We've got a, a Zinc Ultra Scale Plus sitting, kind of running the show, but be, to be clear here, there are no data converters on this card. This really is all about converting from um, the, the RF frequencies between six and 18 gig down to a low IF and, uh, and back and forth there. Um, a natural question that usually comes after this too is well, what do you do to go above 18 gigahertz? If you notice the block diagram that we had previously or in the picture, there's sort of this module concept that slaps into the main carrier. That module in its current form supports the six to 18 gig conversion, extending that to get up to millimeter wave so that we have uh, uh, accessible, usable, small-ish form factor hardware that'll cover up to 24 to 40 gig or 24 to 52 or 24 to 70, wherever the 3GPP folks land with their extensions to the millimeter wave cellular. All this is kind of on the table. Uh, we've been doing a bunch of work in this space over the last few years on and off uh, with a project called Daylight for being able to have a millimeter wave module that would, uh, that would bolt into the same topology. So kind of reusing a lot of the same core pieces, uh, reusing the same sub six gigahertz SDR to be able to consume the, um, the signal and being able to transmit and receive it, but using this topology to kind of do that last step up to the, the higher frequencies that are necessary. And for what it's worth, connectors and cabling, there's a huge, from a hardware perspective, like this is where we, we envy the software people because you don't ever have to worry about all the pain in the ass factors of what does a connector actually look like at 40 gigahertz. The, 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 I think the, the hint there is that it's a, it's a different universe entirely than what a lot of the sub six gigahertz people are used to thinking about, but it's a necessary evil to be able to um, support it and, and figure it out. So. Um, Kind of takeaway here is if you're interested in pushing some of these boundaries and looking at higher frequencies and doing some interesting work around not just the signal side there, but also the hardware that's gonna enable it and it's gonna get out into the wild and be able to support some of these use cases, come talk to us. Um, we're doing a lot of work across this entire domain of not just building the hardware, but bringing the software on top of it and getting solutions out there into the wild. And we'd love to be able to, uh, to chat with you going forward. And that is my lightning talk. Thank you so much again for having us here at GRCon. And if there's any questions, I guess I could take them quickly, but I know there's a bunch of stuff teed up. Um, any questions for John? It's super exciting stuff. Um, cool. Awesome. Right. Cool. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks.